indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, the first item on our agenda is uh, approval of minutes from our regular meeting and marketing committee meeting in June. Move to approve. Second. We have, a, we have a motion to second to approve. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, public input. And um, is there anyone in the public other than our special guest today who would like to be heard? If not, I'd like to uh, call Secretary David Gwynn, Secretary of District 7, uh, Department of Transportation, forward. Thank you so much for coming today. No, I'm glad to be here. I appreciate the invitation. In fact, I spent the last uh, day and a half down at the Tamp or at the uh, Meridians for Better Transportation Conference in St. Pete. So I was able to time perfectly coming back from that, going back to our office. So uh, very glad to be here. We want to thank you very much for your assistance in streetcar funding. It really is, uh, it's a sea change, and uh, we're going to do our very best to uh, make really good use of those funds. Right. No, I, you know, I'm sure you are. I, I, some of you, I know I, I shared some of this with Jeff in, 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 in terms of kind of how this came about, but I thought it would be good to, to share with you. You know, we, um, it's been a little bit over a year now um, that we went from the TBX, which we kind of put to rest and evolved into Tampa Bay Next, and part of the Tampa Bay Next program and process is to look for things other than widening interstates, putting express lanes, which was really what TBX was primarily about. And um, when I came on as secretary, one of the first things that uh, we did was go up to Tallahassee and talk to our folks about what can we do. Uh, we, we have a lot of things we can't do. We know what those are, but we asked what can we do, especially as it relates to things like transit opportunities in terms of uh, expansions of transit. We know we can't really operate and maintain them on our own. We're not an operator. How can we partner with folks like Hart and yourself in order to try to do things? And so, as you probably know, we, we are funding a number of studies, a lot of them being administered by Hart to look at BRT and other things. But we also saw that the, uh, the streetcar expansion, which we were also proud to be a partner of uh, funding that study, um, it's something that holds a lot of promise, but we also know that we're competing with a lot of other people around the country for the federal money. And one of the things that our folks in central office told me was they said, you know, when we come down to Tampa, one of the things when we notice that we ride a streetcar is that um, it's maybe not as convenient at times to ride it as far as when you buy your ticket and you get on here <coughs> and, and the cost. And he, they said, we well, you know if we can make it free for a while and really get that ridership up, see what the demand is, expand the hours, make it something that is going to be more attractive for the future federal funding for the modernization and extension, um, that would really go a long way. And then everybody looked around and said, well, how do we do that? And um, our folks in the central office were able to find some funds that could be used for this type of a purpose. And that's sort of how the three-year uh, grant came about. Mm -hmm. And they told me, they said, the only thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to convince the governor's office to let you do it. And fortunately, we were able to make the case. And we have been talking with Jeff, and we asked him, please don't publicize this, because we hate to say it's not going to happen. But we needed some information, and he was very good to help us get the information we needed to, to present in terms of what is this going to cost. Um, the only thing I would say is that, you know, over the next three years, you know, hopefully with this uh, money to make it so that we can make it free, uh, I know you all will do a good job to market it. I think the higher ridership we can get on it and the more we can make it an option for people, the, the better case we're going to have for the bigger federal money, which we need in order to extend it and modernize it. So we hope to be your partner on that. Um, we really hope that it does produce the results that we think it will. And so we thank you for partnering with us on this as well. Thank you very much. Well, we can't yeah. thank you enough. Thank you for coming. Can, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Hey, Secretary, uh, can we make the uh, the agreement for four years so that it comes during another election cycle? <laughs> I, I think, I, I, not, that, not that that had anything to do with us getting the money, but boy, that would be probably a nice thing to do. It's got actually it's statutorily three years is all I can do. Ah, okay. All right. I knew there was a reason it was only three. Yeah, statutorily three. Uh, it had been done twice before, I was told, once in Jacksonville and once in Miami. Um, and from what I understand, both of those are still free. Um, it was 
you know, that was just part of what they did. Uh, we, is there still state dollars that go into it? Are it still free? No, okay. it, it, I guess it gen either it generated enough ridership that they decided to keep it free, mm -hmm. or they found other ways to, you know, to sub. I don't really know if they how their funding came to support that, but um, in this case, I think the, the 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 one thing that was very important was the fact that we were looking to do something more than just make it free. Right. We want to make the case to expand it, to modernize it, to make it something. And of course, it doesn't hurt that when you look at where it goes and all the development that's coming, we're also getting a lot of complaints downtown from people about traffic. And you know what we tell them is, not a whole lot we can do with the roads downtown. They're, they're basically there. But what we can do, perhaps, is look at other modes, get people out of their car, give them opportunity to get in another. That's why some of our downtowner and other things that we help fund um, are going to be more important. Uh, Mr. Vinnick has a lot of plans for downtown. Others do as well. And cars aren't going to be the answer for a long time. Imagine parking rates at some point are going to go up. People are going to look for options. And you know, we hope that this is one of the ones they'll take. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for your help. Thank you. Thank right, you very thank much. Very much. Very good. Okay. Um, the agenda has been reorganized a little bit uh, to be consistent with the uh, BOCC's agenda and the Heart Board's agenda. So uh, we will start uh, with uh, a presentation on the fiscal year 2019 proposed budget and service plan. Mr. Seward. You wish to go to the podium? Sure. Good afternoon, Jeff Seward, uh, Hart, uh, Interim Chief Executive Officer and slash CFO person. Um, <laughs> we are going to uh, uh, divide up uh, this presentation today between myself and uh, Ms. Cindy Zambella. Um, I, I get to do the cool, fun stuff that, that we're, we've uh, been talking about and that Secretary Gwynn mentioned. Um, and a couple of new items uh, pertaining to uh, our new service as we move into to the next year. So, first and foremost, um, our budget is going to be very different next year. Uh, it's going to not only um, be a, a higher amount of, of um, expenditures, but an increased service as well. Something that I haven't had the the privilege to to talk to you about um, since coming to heart um, over the last six years. So again, we have our award of our $2.7 million of transit service development grant from FDOT, which uh, again, we, we thank Secretary Gwen um, for working with us on. This is a, a fantastic opportunity to, to grow service, uh, gain more attention to the streetcar, and prepare us for our big federal um, grant request in a couple of years. Um, so as part of this uh, assumption of, of grant funding, we will be going to free fares. So we, a component of the funds that are coming in uh, will take the place of what we would typically collect around $500,000 a year on fair collection. So that piece has, has been removed from, from, from the budget or replaced with this funding. Coupled with that fair elimination, we are also going to, um, after our testing phase with Flamingo, which we had talked to you about before, which is our smart card program that we're moving forward with, we are going to be removing all of the current Flamingo equipment that has been installed on those cars, um, they are going to go in as, as spares and reserves for um, our buses. So it, it, it's not a waste. We are definitely going to be able to reuse those and lower the cost that we would have to otherwise of having to buy new equipment. Uh, the fare boxes will also be removed uh, from the cars as well. So we're going to expand service and we're going to focus on commuting options. So in a minute, I'm going to show you what the service model, and it's a recommended service model. We can, we can talk about any tweaks that you would like to see um, to that model today. Um, that we will also be going to, um, mentioned a short conversation uh, this, morning, or this afternoon uh, with President English that uh, we have to re-engage with our CRAs, and we may have an opportunity to continue with the, that level of funding for free Saturdays and maybe add some hours on to specific days of the week. Um, but again, let me show you what that recommended service model is going to be. Then we can decide on exactly how we want to approach that. But again, commuting options. We want folks that live and work in the downtown urban core to park out of the urban core and ride to work or leave their homes in the downtown urban core and ride to work. 
So we are going to try to develop a service model that, that can support that. And then I had mentioned a, a, already a couple of times um, when we talked about this additional funding that we are going to really ramp up our marketing um, campaign. And now that a couple of big events for HEART um, have concluded, we can spend a lot of our time uh, focusing on the events of October and what it will look like of, of getting writers on board. So just a quick comparison between what we had proposed in, in fiscal year 2018 to what we're looking at in 2019. So average, if you look at all of the metrics that we look at <coughs> excuse me, for service, such as trips, our vehicle hours, our revenue hours, our vehicle miles, and our revenue miles, the total average increase in service is 75.5% increase across the board, average of, of changing the entire dynamic of how we provide streetcar service. That's huge. Trips, we're looking at an 83% increase. Vehicle hours, 63. I mean, you can go through vehicle miles, 83. We are going to really be out on the track um, moving people around. So this is a great, great opportunity. So our comparison. So right now, right now the bottom is where we are. Typically noon to 10, Monday through Thursday, Friday 11 to 1, Saturday 11 to 1, Sunday noon to 8 with 20 minute frequencies, then we jump to 30 minute frequencies for the last hour of each of those uh, Friday and Saturday nights. The top is what we are recommending we move forward with. Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. we're gonna have 15 minute frequencies. From 7 to 11, we're going to shift back to 20-minute frequencies. On Friday, again, 7 to 7, 15. 7 to 2 a.m., 20-minute frequencies. Saturday, 8.30 to 2. Again, we're starting early, even on Saturday, from 8.30 to 2 a.m. And then Sunday, again, early, 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. So we are able, comfortably, okay, maybe not overly comfortably, but we are confident that this additional funding uh, with the elimination of the fares the additional funding that we've put in, along with the, the increases in, in Avalorum that we're seeing coming in, that we are going to be able, and the shift over from the in-towner to the streetcar from the city of Tampa, we will be able to support the service. So when we're looking at other um, additions to service, we have the opportunity to run later if, if, if we can get the funding um, earlier, I don't think is, is a real payoff, but we are able to, to add some hours to this, depending on what the CRAs are, are willing to contribute, knowing that that's free Saturdays obviously won't be a need anymore. So we, we, can, we can look at, at um, options going into um, the next 30 days uh, before uh, it goes before the city of Tampa um, for the special assessments. So. This is our recommendation for service for next year. And with that, uh, we'll turn it over to uh, Ms. Zambella. But however, one, one piece that's not on this slide. Um, we had talked about the, the marketing campaign, which, which I know um, uh, Vanessa will go over here in, in a few minutes. But uh, I'm taking every opportunity when I go out and speak about the streetcar of looking at um, any types of partnerships that we, we can gain with those in the downtown urban core, particularly with events that, that other organizations or agencies are, are working on in the, in the coming months. And uh, had the opportunity to uh, speak at a, a downtown um, a partnership luncheon of uh, property owners uh, this past week that uh, Mr. English invited me to. And I had the opportunity to, to meet some folks that I normally wouldn't have met. and. Um, particularly with Crew Tampa Bay, the city in pink in October. Um, I have volunteered um, hard to, uh, since October obviously is our, our, our kickoff month for the new service, um, it, we're gonna make a pink streetcar and um, work with any type of events that that, that group needs um, to utilize the streetcar. Um, I, I saw some pictures today of a, of a trolley that we lit um, pink inside. Um, I talked to uh, Ms. Gower about the uh, opportunity of even using one of our, um, our trolleys, light it up pink, and use it to drive around town and look at all the other pink buildings and, and facilities that are going up. So uh, these are the types of things we're looking for. We, we, we don't want to rest on this 2.7. We want to keep growing and, and going out and doing special things and getting more revenues in so we can grow service or add some new amenities. So we're looking at 
not just sitting back and going, oh, cool, we got it for three years. No, this is, this is to me, this is a catalyst, and this is catalyst funding, and we need to, we need to make it grow as, as best we can. So I just wanted to share that with you. As we get more details, as we get closer to October, um, on not just this event, but other events or other uh, partnerships that we can do with organizations um, in the Tampa Bay region, uh, I'll be bringing those back to you. So with that, I'm going to turn over to Cindy, and she can talk about um, the dollars and cents. Which are very cool, too. I mean, <laughs> he doesn't just get to be the cool kid. Um, for the record, Cindy Zambella, Director of Budget and Grants for HART. Um, this, this slide is um, a lot of information. So we have, um, in general, we combine both the HART and the THS um, budgets, annual operating budgets, and that's demonstrated here in this slide. Um, I'll, I'll talk about them on, in a more granular level as we go on. Again, the roll up here is a combination of, of both HART and THS operating revenues and expenses for FY19. The budget is coming in at 2.8 million. That is an increase um, from our current budget of 2.3. So I'll explain how that all rolls together. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to go and start from the bottom actually. Um, and talk about the THS board expenses. These are provided to me by the City of Tampa, and for FY19, they are proposed to be 25,000. So the way in which the THS corporate budget works, it's a um, funding from City of Tampa, and the revenues are a combination of the non avalorum assessment um, any other revenues that they uh, will report, which are primarily from advertising. And then the city of Con Tampa makes a contribution to make up the delta of what the expenses will be and the contribution that is needed for HART to balance its budget. So as you can see from um, FY18, uh, or this year FY18, the non ad valorem assessment went, went up about $94,000. And why it's looking like it's not going um, up but down is because in that first line where you have $917,000, that also included the line from last year where we got an extra CRA contribution of $150,000. So that's why you're seeing that line a little inflated from the regular non avalorum assessment because that's where we put the additional CRA contribution. So what's interesting to look in at this slide is to see that what we did is we kept the contribution to heart flat at $618,000 because of the increase in the non avalorum assessment. Um, and while we did have a little bit of a difference in the contribution that, C that the city of Tampa would make, um, we were able to keep the overall contribution to heart flat at 618,000. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Sort of. Okay, mm -hmm. so this all rolls up into Hart's operating budget for the streetcar. Um, so I think there's a couple different things here to point out that are um, of note. Um, and again, I wanted to point out a Hart operating budget for the streetcar of $2.5 million. And while the budget looks like it's only increasing by about $500,000, we're actually annualizing to only spend about $1.6 million. So if we use our actuals, which has been our methodology in, in developing our, our budgets with Hart within this last two years, we're using our actuals as a uh, jumping off point, if you will, for um, subsequent budgets. So assuming a $1.6 million annual spend, we've increased the budget by about $900,000. So how does, how does that all break down? Well, again, thank you to FDOT for contributing $890,000 to our revenue stream <coughs> for FY19. And if you look at the top where, where the revenues are demonstrated, you'll see that state grants have gone up from 100, which is our block grant, and we've added the $890,000 um, to that contribution. We've also taken our fares way down to $30,000. Um, the $30,000 was left there with the intention that we would still charge for charters or special events. 
over and above our regular patronage. So I did leave a, a small amount there for, for that, that purpose. Um, and then the other contribution for City of Tampa is we, we get a, a normal contribution from them every, every year of 450000 That line there has also gone up by $226,000. And as Jeff mentioned, that will be for, uh, from the in-towner that will no, we will no longer be operating, but they've agreed to use to support the streetcar. So that's the revenue side. So on the expense side, um, there's a, a couple things here I think you'll be happy to, to know is that um, we've upped our marketing budget, which I'll just jump right down because that's a, a, a really important line uh, I know for, um, for the streetcar. Um, and that has increased by 130,000. Um, <clears throat> some of the, the less exciting things, but necessary things, we've of course increased our utilities because we'll be using a lot more electric. Um, we've increased our insurance. Um, and as far as the personnel services go, um, that, that has obviously increased as well. We'll be adding staff to, to um, accommodate the new service. We are adding six motormen one supervisor and two mechanics um, in, in, lieu of, in, in light of the fact that we'll be putting so much new service on, on the street. And uh, I work my way back up. So if there's any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. The only thing I missed was <clears throat> in revenues, did you, did you assume that we would once again, get an extra $50,000 from each of the CRAs? I assumed that the city of Tampa would make up the delta. So the way in which that would, again, that, that's why it kind of demonstrated where we would be keeping the, the contribution from the city of Tampa um, at the 618000 Because the non ad valorem assessment did increase by almost $100,000, <laughs> it didn't necessarily require that contribution. And at the point in time where I put the budget together, that was not a given. So that is not really specifically in the budget. Um, although, again, if that is the case, we would be able to add additional expenses um, or we would be able to, to change the way in which it's positioned under the City of Tampa contribution. Okay, so in other words, <laughs> it, it isn't. But if we work with the CRAs and they do want to continue contributing, then it it is additional funding which we can lower some of these these other revenue sources to, to supplement, or we can add more to marketing, or again we could add. Um, or you could improve headways. So, correct. Yes, absolutely. Yes, sir. Jeff, can I ask a question? Um, th these are fairly generous operating hours compared to what we've done in the past. I, I, are we going to, um, I guess what we need to see, normally we have total ridership numbers which are presented to us on our monthly basis. Mm -hmm. can, can we get them in, in tranches so we see what the ridership is during these hours of operation? Yes. Because, um, again, I, I'd hate to run a car at, you know, from 1 to 2 or from 12 to 2 o'clock in the morning. There's nobody on there. I, absolutely. And, and uh, something that we are doing, and I, I, I didn't mention this, we are installing uh, passenger counters since we won't be using um, any fare technology. Yeah, we know, no. The clicker? You know, <laughs> the real counters. Um, so we're installing uh, uh, passenger counters so we can break it down. And what I want to do is from... Uh, after the, the mon yes, monitor it and report, but at the same time, just like we do with our fixed route service, evaluate this service over a given period of time. And if we're not getting the riders, then we we pull back or we reinvest that money in, into the areas where we are getting ridership. So absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I know that um, part of it is that people have to depend on it and they have to know about it. So. You know, it doesn't necessarily happen day one. It, it can be month two or month three. But I would not want to keep continuing the, the, the same operation if it's not I, I agree. Free. Okay. S same philosophy as our fixed route. Why are we running a bus that nobody's getting on? Yes. I, I believe I was asked that about the rubber wheel trolley. 
you. But we did take care. Okay. <laughs> Great. Any other questions? No. Looks pretty impressive. Thank you very much. Um, be sure and email all this to all of us so we can. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we move to discussion item uh, agenda two, item two. Ms. Brooks to discuss the website redesign and mobile website. Good afternoon. Chairman English and Board of Directors. I am Vanessa Brooks, the Director of Communications and Marketing for HART. Last month, we committed to come back to the board with a plan for the redesign of the website. At that time, we shared that it was not a secret that the current streetcar website uh, was outdated, really doesn't function suitably, and quite frankly, is not visually appealing. <clears throat> As a result, HART allocated funds in FY18 to redesign the website. After our meeting, uh, we actually went back and began to look at best practices of several transit agencies. And we took a look at DART, BART, MARTA, and Portland. And of them all, we really fancy Portland, one of Mr. Seward's favorites, Seward's favorites. And we identified characteristics of a fully functional website. How should that website look? We wanted it to be visually engaging um, to our customers and our visitors. As a result of that, some of the features that we uh, would like to incorporate into the new website are a static map with traces of the street streetcar. We eventually would like to see that be an interactive map. Uh, we'd also like to have mobile responsiveness, so there would not be a need for um, a separate mobile website. This website will be mobile responsive. Also ADA compliant, easy to navigate, and of course, visually appealing. <clears throat> the cost of the website is going to be thirty-eight thousand dollars. What we're asking the marketing, what we're asking the board to do today is to review and approve the scope of work that is contained in the board packet, so that we can move forward uh, with sending that back to the vendor who is catapult and getting the work started. Once the scope of work is signed, if the board approves, it would be about eight weeks before the website would be. And of course, we would like to engage the marketing committee every step of the way. Um, we have a couple of mock-ups that we'd like to review and make sure that we're all on the same page as we move forward. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I'm not a, an expert on scope for developing websites, but I'm assuming if you're giving this to us, you, you believe this is a reasonable scope for a reasonable fee? Yes, yes, and we've also worked with uh, our information technology division on yes. this as well, and we believe that this is going to not only serve us now, <laughs> Chairman, but it's going to also take us into the future. And conversely, with the, with the time frame, our goal is to get this done by the time by we, time we, we open. Yes, yes. Makes perfect sense. Any other uh, discussion or questions? Um, I have a motion for approval. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Both aye. say nay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, streetcar system performance report for June. Mr. Allen. Good afternoon. Hey, for June, we delivered 99.68% of our contracted trips. We had one day where we lost 6.5 trips due to um, illness of our motormen, unbelievably, all on the same day. Um, we had one reported late departure in June for a 99.95 on-time performance. Once again, June was another um, accident-free month. We've now gone since December 28th without an accident. And, uh, Wheelchairs continue to be high, 40 boardings in June, and we did not provide any extra service because the Amelie events were all on Friday or Saturdays. In June. And, uh, we didn't have any charters or anything like that. So from the performance report, it was a great month as far as the system goes, but it's a very boring month as far as the report goes. Um, as far as vehicle maintenance goes, um, we returned car 429 to service. It has the brand new air conditioning systems on it now that we'll be putting on the rest of the fleet. If you see the car out there, please board it and see what you think. Uh, it's quite an improvement over the system the cars were built with. 
and we've got car 435 in right behind it getting the next set put on. Um, as far as what we're doing for building up for October, we've hired four of the six motormen. They will actually start training on Monday, um, and as we hire the other two, we'll work them into training. Uh, since we've got uh, only a few cars out there at a time, we've got to alter their um, on time or on the job training. So, um, and we've been working, uh, Tim Borchus has been out, we've had the Bernie out. Um, we've got a good plan for the lighting, correct that. Uh, we dynamic tested it last week on the entire system. I believe that's the first time it's been across the CSX interlocking in about eight years. <laughs> and we had it up to Whiting Street where it's never been before. So that was, that was a pretty, pretty exciting day. <laughs> Um, APCs, as automatic passenger counters, as Jeff said, uh, those are getting installed next month. And um, August 15th, the first of the ticket vending machines will be removed from the stations. Yeah, that sounds like you've been busy. Yeah, and uh, we're going to continue to be busy. So That's great. Hopefully you'll see the uh, some very visible improvements on the line here. Thank you very much. And if I can, I, I had forgot I had forgot to mention that we are taking all the TVMs off, and we will um, we'll resurface um, the platforms, uh, and so you won't even notice that, that they were there. Um, and we also have, I believe, some pictures of the Bernie to show. So, as Mr. Allen mentioned, um, Mr. Borchers has been here. Um, uh, we had the Bernie out last week, which is very cool. Um, but we are progressing to uh, our goal is to have that uh, ready to go and refurbished um, in October to use as a centerpiece of our uh, ribbon cutting. So, uh, so Brian, I'm going to ask you to come to the podium because you can narrate as I flow here. <laughs> this was just um, over the inspection pits, getting the car ready to go. There she is outside under power for the first time in a number of years. Leaving the yard up in Ybor by the Scientology building there. Actually out on the line, which is so cool. Really? And there it is down <laughs> the line. I'm just going to keep saying that because I think it's uh, awesome. Pretty easy. So as, as we progress with the Bernie, we'll be providing the board um, updates. And I know I've talked to Vanessa that we're going to do some, um, in our marketing, we're going to show the, the life of the renovation um, from where it was originally completely not operable um, to refinished and, and ready to go. So That's we're great. really proud of the work. I know. Um, and, and yes, it's, you know, we have a, a our, we hired our full-time heart uh, director of maintenance um, started Monday. So Ryan now is 100% dedicated to back to the streetcar and is he ever? It's all, it's all great news. Good. Thank you both very much. Uh, Mr. Matthews, any legal report? The only item I have relates to that personal injury matter that's been kind of floating around for several months now. Uh, our adjuster reached out, our general liability adjuster reached out to potential plaintiffs counsel and asked for a number of items, um, namely photographs, and to take the recorded statement of the potential plaintiff. Uh, they denied the adjuster's request to take the, the, per the recorded statement, hmm. uh, but did provide a few photographs of this uh, alleged rail that was in disrepair um, that, that the, pl the potential plaintiff tripped on. Um, they requested a, a response to their updated demand by July 11th, which was a week ago. The adjuster and I determined that um, you know there's no liability and no real reason to to respond to the demand, um, and so we have not, and uh, we're, so we're going to sit back and wait and see what they do, and so far we haven't heard anything yet, so we will keep you updated. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, Chair's report, I really don't have anything to report. Um, you've heard all the great news since our last meeting, and I'm really impressed that Ms. Jeff's yes, been able to make this much progress this fast, and Ms. Brooks is doing the same thing. So um, this is going to be a really exciting year for the streetcar system. Really looking forward to um, to changes. Uh, Mr. Stewart, do you have uh, more report? I, I do not. Ms. Gage, is there any report from you this month? Good afternoon. 
Um, thanks for having me. It's Lori Gage with Vector Media. Um, we have our you know year to date numbers. I'm sorry, contract year to date numbers in the report. Um, I do have year to date numbers. I don't know if that makes a difference, but um, we're up to 112,000 um, that has been booked for the calendar year of 2018. And uh, Vanessa asked me to talk a little bit about some of the uh, clients that we're talking to that we might be getting future revenue from. Um, the big advantage of Vector Media is they have a very large national sales team. And that's, that's really the focus of advertising revenue that we can expect to get on streetcars because it's just a little too expensive for our little local businesses. So this is all really good news. Um, we, I have a verbal commitment from the Lightning. They want to come back um, and do a streetcar again. We did a little um, very small uh, job with the Rays when they did their announcement last week. Mm -hmm. So they put some signage on the streetcars. That was a little one. Um, we've got um, the Nash North American Amateur Gay Amateur Athletic Alliance Softball World Series, potentially, coming from the Tampa Bay Sports Commission. Um, you know, the History Museum we've talked to, Tito's we keep talking to, Beasley Media Group, Red Bull. Um, we did get a contract signed for the National Center for Transplants, so you'll see that revenue being added. Um, I know that part of our team is talking to Moffitt Cancer Center about doing some graphics at the Dick Greco station, so that would be kind of new. And we've done a few pole banners and some floor graphics, and we've done some self-promotion on the columns and banners, but you know that's always been an opportunity. Uh, Royal Caribbean Cruise I've spoken to, Publix is interested, um, and then of course Miller Coors Renewal for 2019, we should be talking about coming up soon. That's great, you know, um, would all of the increased service hours raise our rates? I mean, don't you sell on the basis of how many views a vehicle's gonna get? Sort of. I mean, we really sell on the basis of what the market will bear. Because when people are buying outdoor, except for, you know, specific, you know, the, the alcohol, allowing the local alcohol is, is huge. Um, and then we're, the streetcars are generally running in entertainment, you know, bars, restaurants, shops, museums, sports. Um, so... <laughs> We have to look at what the market will bear. If if they could buy a billboard, you know, or if they could buy some bus shelters, or it, so it's that's really what it's based on. But we can. I mean, with increased service hours, you know, that would be great. That's the other challenge. We don't run every car on a daily basis, so you know, if they wrap one car, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're getting any exposure, you know, that day or that week or what have you. So. Um, for the national buyers, you know, they've got much bigger budgets, so... And they'll understand that if we start running full-time in the morning and later at night, that's more views. Absolutely, <coughs> yeah. Yeah, and it just helps us to sell it, because any of our, you know, whether it's a bus or a streetcar, it's not an automatic from an ad agency perspective. Um, we don't fit all of the graphics and all the measurements that they like. You know, you can't put a traffic counter and, uh, you know, and count cars that are driving by this specific sign type of thing. So we have to come up with all the other advantages, you know, that you're getting when you when you use outdoor, sure. when you use transit. But in general, things are looking up. Things are looking really good. Have never been busier. That's great. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, that brings us to compliance reports. Uh, any other questions about any of them? Ridership, financials, marketing report for June. Any old business, any new business, hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.